going with just one Wi-Fi, so hopefully it'll stay live. <laughs> Looks like Ellen is still out in the kitchen. Oh, we messed Peg, too. These back row Lutherans, they just disappear all over the place. <laughs> Why are you the ah, there you go. Nobody will know. That's right. You're just going to go. Well, tonight we will be using suffrages, which is the prayer service and evening prayer service for our worship. So I would invite you to take just a couple moments and to prepare your hearts for worship. Please join me in our invitation to worship. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have, have mercy, mercy on us. Okay, come on. Come on. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And our evening dialogue. Show us your mercy, O God. And us salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again. And sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care. And guide us in the of justice and truth. Let your ways be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, give us diligence to seek you, wisdom to perceive you, and patience to wait for you. Grant us, O oh God, a mind to meditate on you, eyes to behold you, ears to listen for your word, a heart to love you, and a life to proclaim you through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we continue in our reading in Genesis of Joseph's story, tonight's reading is from Genesis 41. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, I remember my faults today. Once Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me and the chief baker in custody in the house of the captain of the guard. We dreamed on that same night, he and I, each having a dream with its own meaning. A young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. When we told him, he interpreted our dreams to us, giving an interpretation to each according to his dream. As he interpreted it to us, so it turned out. 
I was restored to my office and the banker was hanged. Then Pharaoh sent for Joseph and he was hurriedly brought out of the dungeon. When he had shaved and changed, shaved himself and changed his clothes, he came in before Pharaoh and Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream and there is no one who can interpret it. I have heard it said that you, of you, that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. Joseph answered Pharaoh, it is not I. God will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, Pharaoh's dreams are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dreams are one. The seven lean and ugly cows that came up after them are seven years, as are the seven empty ears blighted by the east wind. They are seven years of famine. It is as I told Pharaoh. God has shown to Pharaoh that he is what he is about to do. There will come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. After them, there will rise seven years of famine, and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt. The famine will consume the land. The plenty will no longer be known in the land because of the famine that will follow, for it will be very grievous. And the doubling of Pharaoh's dream means that these thing, this thing is fixed by God, and God will shortly bring it about. Now therefore, let Pharaoh select a man who is discerning and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh proceed to appoint overseers over the land, and take one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt during the seven plenteous years. Let them gather all the food of these good years that are coming and lay up grain under the authority of Pharaoh for food in the cities and let them keep it. That food shall be a reserve for the land against the seven years of famine that are to befall the land of Egypt so that the land may not perish through famine. The proposal pleased Pharaoh and all his servants. Pharaoh said to his servants, can we find anyone else like this, one in whom the Spirit is the Spirit of God? So Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has shown you all this, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall order themselves as you command. Only with regard to the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Removing his signet ring from his hand, Pharaoh put it on Joseph's hand. And he arrayed him in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. He had him ride in the chariot of his second in command. And they cried out in front of him, Bow the knee! Thus he set him over all the land of Egypt. Moreover, Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without your consent, no one shall lift up hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. God's word, read, spoken, and heard. For this word, O God, we give you thanks. So now does the cow make more sense? It's not an angel. I, well, no. It was what was in the stock photos. <laughs> Sharon sure, was giving me a bad time about why I had a cow. Well, why you bet that cow? Because it was in the stock photos. <laughs> so we're in the middle, we've kind of come about midway through Joseph's story as of tonight. And we've kind of been hitting the high points, if you will, of his journey in all of our readings. And that's a good thing. Because, you know, it's a long story in the book of Genesis. And one of the things when we only kind of pick it up here and there is it may feel like all of this stuff happened instantaneously. I mean, you're thrown into a pit, you get sold into slavery, you're thrown into a dungeon, and then, boom, next thing you know, you're a ruler of Egypt. Isn't it all great? What we forget is from where we are here tonight to where we started here, 
the Wednesday after Ash Wednesday, is 13 years. Because Joseph was about 17 when his brother's in the pit. And by the time he takes over the land of Egypt, he's 30 years old. Imagine sp spending the prime of your life in prison, basically, in a dungeon. And all because your brothers are jealous of you and somebody lied about what you did. Things haven't changed all that much. We've just gotten better at imprisoning folks for things that they have very little control over. But one of the things Joseph's story teaches us is the power of waiting and trusting that God is at work even when it doesn't seem like God is doing anything. While Joseph was in prison, no doubt he had to have been tempted to kind of take matters into his own hands. I mean, if you were spending your prime years, wouldn't you try to figure out a way to escape? Or maybe you'd come up with, let's incite a riot. Or since he had found favor with some of the guards, you know, maybe pay him off a little bit and get a little more favor out of them. And yet we don't read about any of that. Rather, Joseph waited. He waited for the Lord and for how the Lord was going to deliver him from this situation. That means that waiting for the Lord is not a weakness, but a strength. Waiting for the Lord is not an expression of fear, but of faith. But let's face it, waiting's hard. We want to do something. We got plans. Don't mess with my agenda. Isn't that our natural response when we're asked to wait? In the wake of everything that we've gone through and continue to go through, we've been faced with a lot of forced waiting. I think of just some of the things that I know. I am still waiting for the clear title to my vehicle that I paid off last year. And every time I call both the lien holder, the former lien holder, and the licensing here, they're waiting on paperwork. They've been waiting on paperwork for nine months. Each passing month is getting me a little more frustrated with waiting. And we go to the store. And you, you look for something because you know they have it. And it's not there. Did that with cream cheese the other day. And the guy who was stocking the shelves, I was, he's like, do you need anything? I said, I've been looking for this kind of cream cheese for months. He goes, yeah, we've not been getting that. And I don't know when we'll get it back. We just have to wait. <laughs> I want my garden veggie. <laughs> oh. And the other thing for at least some of us is Amazon Prime. You're supposed to be able to get it the next day. Next day shipping is like gone. <laughs> Though I have to admit, I ordered something for church late Sunday and it got here today. So, you know, we're up to two days, three days, which is better than, you know, four weeks. That was a little while ago. <sighs> Waiting. We struggle with it. We might even think that if God is all that powerful, why do I have to wait for anything? Couldn't God just kind of snap the proverbial finger and get it done? What's with all this waiting? Well, God invites us to a different kind of waiting. One whose purpose is not to deny us anything, but is designed to draw us into deeper faith and a greater hope. It may feel like we've been deprived, but it truly is an invitation an invitation to put our trust in God. We can't control the things of our world any more than Joseph could control what was happening to him. But how you live into those times reflects the pay, power of faith within you. Joseph gives us a good example of faith grounded in God and trusting that God is in control. That God is somehow even at work in horrible situations. Doesn't stop the bad things from happening, but it gave Joseph, and can give us, the strength to live within them in order to make life different. Waiting for God opens us up 
and then we can step forward and actually do something in faith. Because if you remember this reading, Joseph didn't just wait. When called upon, when the time was right, he told Pharaoh exactly what the dream meant. He did something and risked. Faithful waiting doesn't come naturally to us, rather from God. But unlike Joseph, who didn't know if things would ever work out, we know where we're ultimately headed. Joseph had no idea that he would one day be, in a sense, the most powerful man in Egypt, other than Pharaoh. And that he would save not only his family, but an entire nation from destruction. God gave Joseph more than he deserved and more than he even desired. And we know that's the same with us. For through Jesus Christ, we are given more than we deserve or really even desire. And we know what's waiting for us one day. And that will not disappoint us. Our hope and our confidence is grounded in Jesus, who for us and our salvation, as Paul would write, humbled himself. And he took on the form of a human being and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. A cross where he suffered between criminals. But now God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee would bow on heaven and on earth, and every tongue would confess him as Christ, the Lord, the glory of God. Our lives unfold much like Joseph's, a little by little by little. And sometimes there's difficulty, and sometimes there's great surprises. And so we, like Joseph, wait in faithfulness and confidence in Jesus. And we trust to God all our days and, yes, our burdens. And we know, we know the end of the story. The story that was written with your name attached to it. And so we wait and we listen and we trust. I invite you to pray with me. God who waits for us. You've worked through your creation in so many unique ways, it's overwhelming at times. And we often take it for granted. We want to enjoy, we want everything to work its way out now. We're not good at waiting. Draw us into your divine waiting that we might experience a deeper, more confident faith that will sustain us in times of challenge and doubt. Remind us that in you, our story is written. In you we are redeemed, and in you is life itself. We ask all things, O oh God, as they're in accord with your will, as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We sing together, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Let us enter into a time of prayer, listening for God to speak as we wait on the Lord here in this place. Gracious God, when our patience grows thin, fill us with your strength that we may be sustained in the challenges of life. When our words are hurtful, forgive us and lead us into ways of reconciliation and renewal. Empower us to live out our faith with integrity. When situations need to be changed, move us from waiting into action. Give us your words to speak so that through our deeds you might bring deliverance and justice. When your church is uncertain, where discernment is needed, send your Holy Spirit into its midst. Fill it with power, shower wisdom upon those you have called into leadership. When sickness, death, and destruction come into the midst of your people, send your healing, wholeness, and renewal. When we want to give up, shut down, blame, remind us of the saints you have placed in our paths that we may once again be stirred to hope. When words fail, listen to the heart, listen to the cries of our hearts, O oh God. Please join me in our concluding prayer. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us today. We ask you to forgive us all our sins, where we have done wrong, and graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. We close today singing Abide With Me, but it's on video because I couldn't, for some reason, get the other one to work.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thank you for being part of this evening. Please share a sign of peace as you depart this evening. Did it stay up? Yeah. I was...